to make a good introduction. This is the North Division. Come on. Yeah. Now that I got my exercise for today. <laughs> How low can you go, huh, Ethel? <laughs> okay, before we start, I want to give some inspiration today to our contestants. Because they came a long way. They went through their club. They went through their area, and now they're going to the division. And hopefully, one of them will be going to well, one of them will be going <laughs> to the district level. So, some people dream of success, while others wake up and work hard at it. This is what you call determination. Are we together? Some people dream of success, while others wake up and work hard at it. That's called determination. Each and every one of you this morning woke up this morning, either as a contestant, as a functionary, and an audience, to come see a contest, a speech contest. Not a, con not a where you're gonna go to a baseball game or a play. You came to see a speech contest where people are energized to talk about life, motivating others. To me, that's ultimate determination. So I just want to give everybody a hand for that. Okay, I don't want to blow nobody's thunder here. I'm just going to introduce my wonderful, wonderful, and lovely Toastmaster for today. Now, she didn't give me an intro, but I know I could introduce her. Stephanie has been working diligently with me with this contest, and you just do not know the hours we have spent. And I totally, truly appreciate her. Without her, I don't think I would ever got to this point. So I really have to thank Stephanie for that. Thank you so much. And on that note, I will welcome Stephanie to the podium. Stephanie, how long? Curl, curl, curl. I practiced for two minutes. <laughs> two minutes. <laughs> Stephanie. Good morning. Good morning. Well, welcome to the District 30 North Division Humor Speech and Speech Evaluation Contest. Many of you have one of these. Please turn them off. Before we get started, I believe Tim has a 30-second announcement. Just to make sure that these uh, proceedings will be video recorded for eventual post and distribution to the internet. Contestants will be able to get a link right away. It'll be made private. It'll be emailed to your division governors. All division contests will be made public after the last division contest is ran. You can see these videos at www.timsvideo.com when they're publicly released. Thank you, Tim. Now, now I want to introduce our district dignitaries. Lieutenant Governor of Education and Training, Ms. Ethel Batie. Yeah.
Gary Governor Taiwo Collier. to what I'm here to talk about. 
the end of his life probably resonates with me more than any other time in, in his life. What type of legacy do you want to leave? My father was a civil rights activist, a leader, an organizer, an educator. He even pastored a couple of churches. But a legacy is so much more than a list of personal accomplishments. It is also the lasting impressions that we make on those who follow us. Too many times, however, we prioritize things in the wrong order. I'm a financial advisor. I help people with tremendous, complicated financial matters, whether about their money today, their money tomorrow, as well as I deal with things like life insurance and even sometimes even health insurance. But the decisions that we make in our lives right now will have lasting impressions on those who will follow us. The few hours that you could spend with a life event specialist can be the difference between a state-funded cremation and a glorious celebration of life surrounded by loved ones and well-wishers. My father died with no will, no trust, no life insurance, no POA, no IRA, no CD, no DNR, or end of life instructions. But he had his BA, his MA, his EDD, and was ordained as a minister when he was a teenager. Yet when he died, he was in deep, D-E-B-T. There are multiple easy steps and solutions that were available to him which would have prevented a near war amongst his children when he died. However, with all of his connections, he chose to do nothing. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying leaving a legacy is about dying rich or passing on a big inheritance to your children or grandchildren. That's not my message here. But it should never be about dying broke and passing on a big bill to those kids and grandkids. Some of the people in this room are baby boomers. Baby boomers, you are nearing the age or are at the age of retirement. Talk to a professional. I understand some of you have changed careers, have dipped or drained your retirement accounts. I get it. I deal with that. I see that every day. But you still have plenty of options. Gen Xers, which I'm part of. Talk to your parents, and if they're still around, talk to your grandparents. I know it may be difficult, but what's the alternative? Imagine walking into a hospital, as I did, and having a nurse tell you to find out if your father has his affairs in order because they expect him to die at any moment. It's heartbreaking. <coughs> it hurts. And it's a sting that doesn't go away for a long, long time. I implore you. I beg you. Humbly I ask you. Please don't let your lethargy impact your legacy. 
Thank you. Mr. Sergeant Arms, will you please escort the contestants out of the room and time five minutes for them, beginning when they are seated in the room. When that five minutes is over, escort our first contestant back to this room. We will ask our timers in this room to begin timing five minutes. Passion and love of 
of the sport as well as drove me to work hard to overcome certain things. I actually grew up with a really bad speech impediment. I couldn't say three straight words when I was a kid. But I but the ironic thing about that is I always love to talk. So <laughs> <laughs> but my point is that that drive that Jordan had is one of the things that I try to use to work to overcome my my speech impediment and other things as well. I guess you're just as tenacious as the other Michael. Yeah. Well, certain things, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and tell us a little bit about your family. I know you have a child. Yes, I have a one-year-old son. Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, I've been married three years. I got married late. I'm, I'm, I'm 42. So I got married at 39. My son just turned one about three weeks ago. And uh, he's just the greatest, cutest little kid. I know what everyone says. That <laughs> Harrison is. And uh, I, I, oh, there I go. I said, uh, I said, uh. <laughs> so it's, it's really amazing how quickly your life and how you look at life changes when you have that little person. And isn't it just the best feeling in, in the world? You've been gone all day, you come home, and your son sees you, and he's so happy to see you. That's just the best feeling. That's just the best. So, so that's my new drive and passion, <coughs> what I'm working hard on. Thank you. Awesome father. So is there a particular lesson that you want him, and what are you teaching him as he moves forward? What would you teach him? Wow. There's so <laughs> much, especially with current events and things that have been happening our nation and around the world. But probably the lesson I want him to have more than anything is the lesson of belief, the lesson of faith, wherever you stand in the issue of faith, let that be. But I'm talking specifically about belief and faith in yourself. Life in and of itself has enough challenges just to get up every day. Imagine this, today is Saturday, we all could have been somewhere else doing our own little fun activities, but we chose to be here because we, we have a belief in something greater. And that's what I want my, my son to have, is a drive and a passion and a faith and a belief in, in himself that nothing is impossible. So you're going to teach him to play basketball? Oh, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, Michael. There will be one minute of silence before the first contestant and between each contestant. Timekeepers, when I advise you to do so, please signal me with the green light when one minute is up. After the contestants have spoken, the judges will be given all the time they need to complete their ballots. Can I have one minute, please? Evaluation contestant number one, evaluation contestant number one, Heather Vaughn. Your speech was timely, 
we all get stuck in a rut where we're living life and we forget that in living life, life is indeed passing us by. So that message was important, a reminder, especially as we go through our work week, work week and we're ending a work week, essential. I absolutely enjoyed your speech. I thought it was very important. It was an important message that some, we lose sight of all the time. For me, I particularly liked how you worked the stage. Some people will say that you need to go back and forth, but that type of message needs to be centered, and you really made a point to do that. And your use of the podium, for me, was really well done. What I also loved was your tone. I don't know if you saw me, but I was way in the back of the room, and I could hear you perfectly. A lot of people would become very, very nervous, kind of like I am now, but <laughs> it was, I never got a sense of that at all. You owned your message, and that's what's important. Everyone has something that they can work on with their speeches. For me, there were two things that I spotted with you. The first was, your speech seemed to have two separate speeches within it. The first speech was, possibly your relationship with your father, and maybe the regrets that you had there, that could have been a separate speech. The other part of your speech that could have had its own speech in and of itself was being a financial advisor. That's absolutely crucial. That's something that we can all learn from, and that could have been contained within itself. The second part that you may want to work on is, keep in mind, I am a very tough sell. And if you're going to sell me something having to do with financial um, planning for the future, and you were not able to sell your father on that, that for me is very important to keep in mind. As we learn in sales, the first people that you sell are the people that you're the closest to. And the fact that you were not able to sell your father on that, that makes me kind of concerned of what your message is and how you can make it stronger. But those are things that you can work through over time. It's nothing that you can't fix in a couple of speeches. So I think you have a good future, and I look forward to hearing it again in the future. Bye. Thank you. Alex Krukov, evaluation contestant number two, evaluation contestant number two, Alex Krukov. so much it made me think and it made me want to take action. Your introduction was fantastic. You started the speech talking about your own father and his experiences. You mentioned what he had done, all those accomplishments, but these, despite all these accomplishments, he left the family in a bad situation when he died. And it made me think about myself and as a father of kids. Your style of delivery was very moving. 
I love the way you pace the speech. I love the way you organized it. Right from the beginning of the speech, you were making use of various ways to make the listener pay attention. You use questions, you use lists, and you were able to keep the speech very moving for the audience. What I really enjoyed was that you made a very personal appeal to people by relating it to your own life and you also asked questions to make the audience think. You were very strong in your ability to move the audience and you were also very good in giving information on how you can avoid getting into financial problems as you get older. One of the things I will mention that might be for a future speech, whenever you have a topic, keep everything on topic. And for the most part, you did a great job of that. In the beginning of the speech, you talked about having a complicated history with your father, but said, never mind, my speech is not gonna be about that. And that's something that broke up the pace of the speech right in the very beginning. Another thing I would say for a future speech, what would be good to um, pay attention to is acronyms. You used acronyms but didn't define them. For instance, I don't know what DNR is, although I know what a BA is. So it would be good to speak out and define the acronyms for the audience because they might not always know it. I love the way you kept eye contact with the audience. You moved around and kept everybody in the room moving. I love the way you were able to make emphasis on certain things. When you had the big point about leaving you in debt, you actually spelled the word debt. And that placed a big emphasis on your title of the speech. And I absolutely loved your conclusion, how you tied everything together and then at the very end asked the title of the speech. I'm very much looking forward to your future speeches. May we have one minute of silence while the judges mark their ballots? topic that applies in any contest, in any speech that you could be giving. This is an important message regardless of your ethnic background, religious background, your financial circumstances. Everybody needs to be thinking about the financial legacy that they leave behind. <coughs> I also love the way that you delivered your speech. You have a beautiful voice, but you also are clearly a practiced speaker. Your use of vocal variety was striking, especially in a speech that really didn't give you a lot of opportunity for emotion. This was a fairly straightforward speech, and yet it had some emotional content, and you did a great job of 
displaying that through the use of vocal variety without overplaying it, which was really important in a speech of this nature. Another aspect of your speech that I found moving was the honest and personal approach that you took to it. While you told us at the outset that you're a financial planner and you certainly could have given this speech in a very generic way, you chose to take the personal approach to tell us the harder story about your relationship with your dad and the different difficulties that the end of his life presented for you. And I think that that really helped you drive the message home for your audience, but also to keep their attention. This wasn't somebody giving a commercial for his business. This was somebody talking about the impact of his father's death on his entire family, on you and all of your siblings. And I think that that was definitely the right approach for this speech. If I could give you the gift of feedback so that you can deliver this speech a little bit better the next time you do it, what I would offer you is this. First of all, your title was really interesting. It really did catch my attention. Legacy or lethargy. But I feel like you had some opportunities to use that title throughout your speech that you might have missed. For example, you mentioned that your father had options to settle some of his debt, but he didn't take them. That would have been a great time to pull in that word, lethargy, and to differentiate from legacy. I also think that you could have spent a small amount of time differentiating a financial legacy from an emotional one. Your father clearly left an emotional legacy on many people as a teacher and an educator, and you could have differentiated that while he had a stellar emotional legacy, that his financial legacy was not one that was necessarily desirable. But overall, I loved your speech. I believe that your legacy today will carry on for many of the people in this room and will allow them to have those conversations with their families and to leave a better financial legacy than what you experienced. So thank you for that on behalf of everyone. Marianne Reichel. Evaluation contestant number four. Evaluation contestant number four, Marianne Reichel. down and he said good morning good opening but then he got very soft but the mic was here so we could hear you perfectly well I thought he's gonna do one of these numbers on me like when I gave my icebreaker but then you came out and you started telling your story and until the closing sentence I didn't know what the last word of your opening was, but then it made it all come together and it made sense. Uh, the 
body of your speech? Well, it's basically your story. And do you know you use basically one gesture with various forms? You do this, you do this, you do this, you do this. And maybe once in a while it'll come back to center. So you, the gestures were fine, but after about the fifth, I got kind of, okay, my mix it up. Because I know you've got it, because you used a couple other gestures to just try to incorporate them more. Then when you got into the middle of your body, of your speech, you're telling us about, as a financial planner, your stock and trade, what you wish your father would have done to help you and your siblings and your family. And that's when vocal variety came into play because you said something about a near war and your voice went up when you said near war. So I kind of knew what that meant with just those two words. In your clothes, and this really struck me where I live because my in-laws are going through the same issue right now. Do not let your lethargy affect your legacy. <coughs> wow, what a call to action for all of us, if we're baby boomers, of which I am one, to get our acts in order, to help our parents, grandparents, siblings, get their acts in order. In your voice, when you're telling your story about your dad, we heard the sadness, we heard your compassion. Then when you're talking about your financial planning experience, we heard your confidence. And what a financial planner, yourself or anybody else, there's a plethora of financial panels out there that could help us. Normally, I would say thank you as a thumbs down, but today it's definitely a thumbs up as we tied it up all in a package and let us know you were done and thanking us for listening to you. Get it, Chair. May we have one minute of silence while the judges mark their ballots? Mary Miranda, evaluation contestant number five, evaluation contestant number five, Mary Miranda.
the nurse says to you, here's your father on his deathbed, and the nurse says, are his affairs in order? And the, the feelings that he must have had at that time, what Mike did so beautifully was invoke our feelings. And we were right there with his story. The other thing I really loved about your speech was your ending. It was a message, a call to action. Don't leave your people or your, your legacy uh, undone or don't leave a, a left of your legacy. I thought that was a powerful message and a call to action at the end. Now, tips that you might want to do is you told a very personal story, which was great, but maybe add a little dialogue to it. What was dad like? Did you ever have a conversation with him that might have been a little bit interesting rather than just a narrative? The other thing that possibly I think would help would be to, in the beginning, use your power in the beginning. Capture us with your opening words in that initial 30 seconds. Tell us, Papa was a rolling stone and, and acted, as you say it, because those are song lyrics that were really kind of jiving. And say it with, in the opening line, because that gets our attention. Audiences don't always listen. So that captures our attention and zeroes in on what you're going to talk about, and then go into your message. And you delivered it very well with a lot of organization and, um, and, and thought behind it, and emotion. And at the end, when you give that message of don't make your uh, leg your lethargy be your legacy to your family, give it a power punch. Those are the words that we're going to take away and we're going to remember and we're going to repeat and we're going to think about later. So really add emotion to that, those last couple of words. Do those things and Michael, you are on your way to be a powerful voice behind the podium. Ackerman. Evaluation contestant number six. Evaluation contestant number six, Steve <laughs> Ackerman. Fellow Toastmasters and guests, especially Mike, congratulations on a really fine speech. I really enjoyed it because it was a complicated speech, you attempted a lot. You attempted to merge two themes, the themes of the problem that you personally experienced, a legacy that wasn't fulfilled, and the solution to the problem with your other hat of being a financial planner. And I really liked the way you kind of merged these two separate themes together with, for what, for me, it was the high point of the speech. What is your legacy all about? What kind of legacy are you going to leave? I would have liked, and I like the way you did it in the middle of the speech, I would have liked you to be a little more emotional with it. What kind of legacy are you going to leave? In fact, you might have opened with that and left out the apology to the group about not having a humorous speech.
Because you know what was so courageous about your speech? Everyone in this room is either going to be there or has been there, exactly in the chair where you're sitting. And we're going to love you for getting up and telling us what you went through. The double whammy of losing a loved parent. And then being told, get the affairs in order. I think you had a good speech. It would have been a level higher if you had been a little more affirmative. Let your feelings fly. There's obvious, it's obvious that there is some tension or conflict between your family. And we want to know. And you know what? That's the best reason for getting your affairs in order because of the effect on the loved ones. And I wanted to know a little bit more about your brother and sister and how you dealt with this. For me, that's the real theme. That's the speech. For me, that's what it is all about. Let your feelings fly. Be honest. Nobody's going to disrespect you for coming out and telling what it is and how you feel. And I really enjoyed the fact that you were enough of a person within yourself, enough confidence to come out and tell us what you went through and what it means to you. Uh, I think the fact that when the nurse said to you, get the affairs in order, that would have been a good time for a pause, or maybe a little more assertiveness in your speech. So with those reservations, I think it was a great job. Congratulations. Madam Chair.
While we're waiting for the votes to be counted, we'll hear from Barb Beckley, who stepped out. Saturday, 
between 1.45 and 4 o'clock, we are having a workshop calling Unleashing the Leader Within You. Everyone has a little leader in them. And I know you have to bring it on out, and we're going to try to bring that out that day. 1.45 to 4 o'clock, we're going to have at least seven sessions. I added two more on because I had some other special speakers coming in. One particular, Jerry Evans, is going to be teaching the session. Yeah. I see another person, Matthew Fox, over there. He's going to be teaching another session. And one of my own area governors, Jason Woods, he decided to do a session as well. session as well. Yay. So that's just a few just to give you some ideas and some of the instructors that are going to be there because they are very, very eager to teach you guys about the leadership within you. So some of the sessions will be improving your management skills, building your thinking power, power of ideas, building um, thinking power, mental flexibility. So there's a lot of good things bringing you from the back room to the front room as a speaker. There's going to be some wonderful sessions. So please come out. There's flyers on the side. I have flyers. If you can't get to get to wherever, you have to do the event right, just like we did before. If you don't have it, I will be sending out a follow-up. Everybody probably knows I send a lot of emails. So <laughs> you will definitely get an email for this. And on that note, I don't want to steal her thunder. I'm going to welcome Lydia Sora. Division Governor. How's everybody this morning? Yeah. I want audience participation this morning, okay? okay? I'm going to say Holiday Inn and I want you to say William Till twice. Let's give it a try. Holiday Inn? William Till. William Till. Yes, William Till. That's where the fall conference will be. At the Holiday Inn? William Till. William Till. It is going to be an amazing time. We have captivating speeches from our distinguished Toastmaster, Joan Moore. She will be talking about the blueprint of legacy. She will be our kickoff at the Achievers Breakfast. It will be a fun-packed day at the District 30 Conference, November 15th. Please mark your calendars. We also will have the winners from this contest, the evaluation. So that will, be, that will follow the Achievers Breakfast. Next, we will have the business meeting. Woo! <laughs> Residents and VPs. Woo! <laughs> Get the inside information. Next, we'll be followed up by Joan. We will do the keynote for the lunch session as well. Then we will have our red carpet. Are you working on any achievements? <laughs> Anybody? Yeah. Yes, you will get to walk the red carpet. The, your clubs and individual <laughs> awards will be recognized at that time. And we have our recognition chair, Sharon Cruz. She will be on board to hand out to those awards for you. Then we will have our humor, oh, our humor speech contest. Woo! Yeah. Yay! It's going to be at the Holiday Inn. this morning. <laughs> we will have Johnny Campbell. He will be our keynote for dinner. Has anybody heard of Johnny Campbell? Yeah, yeah. yeah he's a transition man. He <laughs> will be coming bringing you winning ideas for your speech to be taken to the next level. So you don't want to miss the fall conference. It is November 15th, again at the Holiday Inn. Williams Town, Williams Town. Thank you. clubs catch the early bird special $99 you could bring your neighbors friends guests everybody for that 99 bucks so and that's through October 31st thank you thank you I know we need a bathroom break but just one give me one minute I want to give Michael a gift because he was our target speaker and it takes a lot to come to division contest and be a target speaker so Michael yeah.